basically our national team was here as rookies, so none of us knew shit. We basically went from hearing about the sport and then basically getting thrown into right there immediately, which is like drinking from a fire hose. Like, you just try to get in what you can and screw up as little as possible. Our learning curve was really fast because we got thrown on to the World Cup and we're basically traveling from country to country, sliding every week in a new place and trying to figure out what we're actually doing. So we got hit with a lot real quick in the season. One thing that's interesting about bobsled that you know a lot of people don't necessarily know is that it's a very technical sport so everything's got to be precise you can be the biggest and strongest that doesn't mean you can push a sled everyone thinks it's this nice gentle roller coaster ride um, but the the amount of time and effort that everyone is going to be putting in every single day and then go down really one of the wildest rides that i think there there is on land it's super intense at the beginning so you're you're hitting the sled as hard as you can you're running as hard as you can for about five seconds you load in and then basically you're trying to stay as tight as you can while I guess imagine someone's just shaking you back and forth and you're trying to resist the shaking. When it comes to like bobsled as a specific sport, there's no comparison that I can say like, oh yeah, I felt like this during football because you don't like, you don't know what it's like going down a track unless you've been in a bobsled and you've gone down a track. Bobsled in itself is 100% a, a unique sport. I would say U.S. bobsled athletes, typically this is their second, third, maybe fourth athletic endeavor in their life. So you'll have guys that have grown up doing, like I played hockey for a long time and then end up deciding to run track and play, and play football in college. It's just very diverse. You got guys that came from CrossFit, didn't play college sports, so it's all over the place, which, which is something that I think is very different from European countries where, like in, in Latvia, for example, like those guys grow up to bobsled in some cases. Like that is their NFL. When you get here, you realize it's, it's a lot more athlete driven than you would expect. Um, so we're doing a lot of the work and doing, doing the things that you kind of think would be taken care of for this level of athlete. Bobsled's not a sport where everybody's a millionaire. Nobody's doing bobsled really for the money. So the, the lack of funding for a lot of people means that the athletes themselves pick up a lot of the slack when it comes to doing work. Uh, we drive our sleds around Europe. We don't have people driving around for us. But when it comes to getting your sled ready, moving it, getting it to the line, like all of that happens to be done by whoever's not sliding and everybody tries to help out as much as possible. Furthermore, when, when you kind of look at a sport that doesn't have a lot of external funding for athletes. One of the ways that athletes can get in and be able to be and pursue the sport for a long period of time is to go through the world-class athlete program that is offered by, you know, the Air Force, the Army. There was a point where it was made up of Navy SEALs, so I think, you know, that's something that has always been a close tie. And what I found out about bobsled and, and how it relates to my specific career field in, in special operations is there's a high amount of uh, teamwork and camaraderie and synchronization that, that has to take place for that team to be successful. Everything that the sled does, the athletes have put a hand on it for that and uh, that is something that I don't think you see like in many other sports and it's pretty unique. It's, you know, these guys are working year round, lifting heavy weights, doing very fast sprints. Uh, pilots are memorizing tracks and so we're doing that all for four to five seconds of just to be as most explosive and as raw as we can and then do that ballet into the sled get in is there's so much that goes into uh, the intricacies. It's a really unique sport in the fact that you have to know how to bob sled it doesn't matter what else you're good at. You got to be strong. You got to be powerful and you also have to be fast. Not to put other countries down, but they're not more impressive than us when it comes to like weight room and sprinting type stuff. Say you, you, we did combines against every other country, I don't think any country could beat us. Where they have us is those guys have been sliding together for years and they take reps together. And us having a ton of rookies this year, we haven't really been able to create solid crews because in order to get well and do well in the sport, you need to push together, practice together. You may only get 50 repetitions 
throughout the season if you're racing every single week, and that counts like all your training runs leading up to it. Um, and for me, like doing something 50 times, of course I'm going to be better than I was the first time, but there's still a huge kind of learning curve that we need to get to. As we progress together as rookies, I think you'll see us progress in the rankings. Bobsled has been, you know, part of the Olympics in the U.S. since the 30s, and I, I think early on there was some success, but there was a long period of time that we didn't see any medal success until like 2010. You know, not to speak on behalf of the women's team, but the reason we have most of the support and funding we do for USA Bobsled is really because of the performance that they've put on for the last two games um, and this World Cup season. So, you know, the, those female athletes are phenomenal and right now the best in the world. And seeing them perform at that level obviously drives the men's team to want to do better. For me personally, my family, being able to go out there and and represent USA and have have my family be a part of that is really important to me. I both wear you know USA on my uniform uh, in the military, and then wearing USA on an athletic uniform. Uh, I want to perform well because I am representing the Air Force, representing Air Force Special Operations Command, and those guys back home. So you want to do well for not only them, but you really want to do well for your team here. We start winning medals, and then once we start winning medals, we can start getting picky about okay, now we want goals because we know we belong on the podium. But I think next season is just starting to get medals. Like regardless, bronze, silver, gold, whatever it is, let's start getting them. As we get closer to the Olympics three years from now, our unit will get better on the sled. And if we start getting as good as these countries, with the athletes that we have, they're not gonna be able to beat us.